just got around here. I, uh, I fractured my ankle. I tripped over at a silent disco. All right, today's video is about this tool belt. Um, we'll talk more about my foot later, if you're interested. But today is about the Occidental leather tool belt and shoulder straps. All right, so this is the Occidental leather tool belt. Um, it's the framing one, the seven bag framer. And I get a lot of questions about the shoulder straps. So I'll start with that. These shoulder straps I bought at the same time as I bought the tool belt, the leather reinforced with nylon and pads. They're clipped at the back and at the front and the strap sort of crosses over at the back here. The, the, what the shoulder strap does is it basically distributes the weight so all the weight isn't sitting on your hips like it would be without the shoulder strap. It makes it so you've, you're bearing some of it on your shoulders. And it also doubles as a pen holder. So I usually carry a pencil like this and this is just your standard carpenter's pencil, rectangular. But I also sometimes carry the mechanical pencils. This is a Pika Dry. I, t I tend to prefer these because you can cut them in whatever way you want and they're flat when you put them on the ground and I'm, I'm just used to it. Uh, this bag has two large pockets and one small pocket. I'm pretty sure this top pocket is for a chalk line but I use it for my tape measure. This is a Milwaukee 8 meter tape measure. Metric, we use metric here in New Zealand. It has a magnetic tip on the end and that's pretty handy when you're measuring up to something metal. It'll grab onto it and then you don't have to hold it. It's a little bit heavy, but it's quite a compact size and it seems pretty durable as well. I've dropped this off a few ladders and uh, still going strong. So one, one great thing about the Occidental tool pouch is it has this little slot for your speed square and I keep the Milwaukee speed square here. I've had this for a couple of months now and it's been good. Um, I don't really use speed squares for much other than quickly cutting framing. So if I'm using a circular saw and I just want a square mark, then I'll pop this out. Uh, this one is a bit wider than most at the base here. There's the one I was using before, the Lufkin one. I mean, I guess it's better. I, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why it's wider. I don't know the main purpose, but I've been enjoying the square. And all that's left is the nail punches here. This one here is for finishing nails. It's got a smaller end to it. And this one's for slightly larger nails. And then I often keep drill bits in here that I'm not using. This particular Phillips bit is quite good for jib screws. It's a Milwaukee one, so yeah, if you're looking for something for plasterboard screws, that's an ideal option. And then the larger pocket here I use for mainly nails and screws. I'm right-handed, so having a large left-hand pouch that's quite open is really handy. I reach in here with my left hand, grab nails or screws, and then uh, I'll have the drill or the hammer in my right hand. And before we move to the other side, I've attached these shoulder straps to the tool belt with actual bolts, um, specifically Chicago screws. I went and bought them because the loops that hold the shoulder straps to the tool belt were moving too much. And Chicago screws are just internally threaded bolts with flat flanges either side. That's like a nice way of holding leather together. Now moving to the other side, we have a lot more going on. We have two smaller pouches in the place of that big pouch. And we have what I think is meant to be a tape holder, but I don't really use it as one. Then we have a lot more loops here for different tools. So first up we have the craft knife, and that is a Tajima craft knife. I really like these ones. This is a 25 millimeter blade, but more recently I've started carrying this around. This is a Gyokucho knife, and the great thing about it it's a saw blade. I've talked about this in previous videos. This is great when you just need to finish a little cut. Maybe you need to cut a pencil in half for some reason. It's great. And then right next to the two knives, I have uh, my Pika pens. We have the Pika mechanical pencil that I referred to earlier. And this is one of my favorite things to have in a tool belt. This is the tie lock marker. I just call it the skinny Pika bolt pen. If you uh, have like a bolt hole, and you need to mark it out with some timber, this will go through that hole and let you mark it out. It's also good for marking on things where the pencil won't. So if it's like a greasy surface, you'll probably get it with this. 
another tool that I've been using a lot more often lately and that's the halter force small bar that part there is quite narrow so it's very good for removing staples and it's good for pulling out tiny little finishing nails and it's just a handy little thing to have I also use it to separate decking boards when I'm screwing them off because it's quite thin and then right next to that is a halter force chisel this is just my whacking chisel this is my breaking chisel this is my prying apart chisel so I'm not very precious about this but there you go and then in the large pocket that all of those loops are within I have the folding ruler and the nips nipex nips this is something that I've kept in my tool belt since I was an apprentice basically it's for tying steel if you're doing reinforcing steel but it's also great for pulling out nails that your hammer or your bar won't pull out you can grab them and yank them out yourself and then my folding ruler so this one goes up to two meters basically the tape measure is for most measurements but if I'm marking a surface like say I'm cutting a sheet of plywood and I need my measurement to be exact I would like to lay this out and kind of use it like a meter ruler because so, you can lay it flat and you know that it's going to be exact and then you can take your time marking or if you want to rip something it's quite good to hold your finger like that on the edge and then your pencil like that and you mark like that or the same with a craft knife if you're doing plasterboard so the way I use these two small pouches I put odds and ends in there so recently I was doing decking and you should always rub out your pencil marks so here's an eraser I've just got sandpaper different screws and bolts and things like that in there there's also a loop on the side of this pouch that's good for hanging drills and nail guns off of and then of course on the back here we have the hammer holster it's around the back hanging on the middle there and then I just go like that I know around the back it seems like it wouldn't really work but I'm so used to it you know I could just I just know where it is it's like second nature now even with the longer handle you think it would be difficult but I had it on around the side on that um that drill loop uh, previously but because it's like a timber handle and it's got this rubber sleeve on it it tend to get caught as I put it in so this is a 16 ounce titanium head timber handle hammer the Vaughan Deluge I've put this rubber sleeve on the handle to improve its grip and it's been a great addition this is still the original handle from when I first got this hammer three years ago or so uh, I've got a couple of videos about hammers uh, that I could link below if you want to check that out but I, I highly recommend this hammer it's been a great all-rounder now if I'm doing demolition I'll pull out the M1 Martinez hammer this one's got a much heavier head so you can almost use it like a sledgehammer the hook on it works better for yanking out nails as well but my day to day far more comfortable with the Vaughan Deluge so that's my daily and that's the point of this video my daily setup one thing that I used to always have in here as well this is like a machinist square it's great for checking the squareness of a blade on a saw or just little areas where that speed square won't get to and I'd usually keep it here but if you look closely right there there used to be a little magnet glued on and that would keep this from falling out but uh, that magnet's fallen off ironically enough and uh, yeah I lose that if I keep it there so that goes back in the pouch that's my tool belt setup this is my daily tool belt setup sometimes I'll mix and match I'll put chalk lines in there or I'll change the hammer like I said or I won't have so many um, rulers and whatnot on the side but uh that's my daily all right so basically what happened was I was up at the sky tower on the weekend they had this silent disco thing on you have headphones on and you listen to the music you want to listen to but then as soon as you take the headphones off it's all silent that's what that is but anyway I was at the bar there and they had this cable cover and it's like a sort of plastic box thing that goes over the cable so people don't trip over the cable and I stood back didn't see that and my foot landed on it and my foot went uneven on it and twisted and I didn't think anything of it I mean I'm a skateboarder so I've rolled my ankles more times than I could count carried on dancing away and then the next day a full day later 24 hours later I started feeling pain in that ankle so we went to the A&E and they did x-rays and everything and basically my ligaments in there they overextended so much that they put pressure on the bone and chipped off a part of the bone so as far as fractures go this is a good one it's called an avulsion fracture I've got this little bit of bone like rattling around in there and I just have to wait for the ligaments to calm down that's basically it so that's why I'm in a moon boot and not a cast so we're actually gonna go to the South Island for a couple of weeks while I recover and uh, 
I won't be doing as many walks as I would hope, but you know, we'll check out beautiful nature anyway. We're doing a bit of a road trip. So no work for a couple of weeks, no videos for a couple of weeks. But if you follow me on Instagram, I'll post some stuff there throughout the trip. Well, thanks for watching this exciting episode. Um, see you in a few weeks. Uh, if you support me on Patreon, thank you very much. Uh, I'll put links below if you want to check that out. I recently did a Q&A on Patreon. A bunch of people asked me questions and uh, I made a video answering them. And also there's new merch. I'll, I'll post the info at the end here. But yeah, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. I remember when I was working in Edinburgh with my uncle Sandy. As a mark of success, he used to talk about hanging doors. So whenever we'd see a rich guy driving down the road in a Bentley or something while we're on our way to work, it'd be like, yeah, he might have that Bentley, but can he hang a door, Scott? That's the question. Like, <laughs> hanging a door was the ultimate. Yeah, but can he hang a door? <laughs>